and health and access to medicine, gender and health, environment, and wars, occupation, migration, and human rights. So the mandate that these thematic groups had was to discuss especially on objectives and actions. So what is the role of the People's Health Movement with respect to these challenges that uh, we had analyzed and discussed in the plenaries and sub -plenaries. And, yes. Can people please uh, sit down and, and be quiet so we can... Be quiet? Is that, is that how we're light? Presentations uh, from these groups. Okay, and I, I kindly ask those who present to speak no more than five minutes and focus on objectives for the health movement in these areas and action that have been discussed and planned. So, we uh, first we have here David Black and he will report for the group uh, who works around trade and health and access to medicines. Thank you very much. Um, we had, a two, we had two really excellent meetings, su supplemented by um, input from some of the other sessions, which were also very helpful. Um, we uh, have produced quite a large, well, a four-page document, which I will not read out, but it is available, um, and uh, we love people to read it. Um, we have a, an opening section which talks about the role of trade and investment agreements um, and the significance of them in terms of being part of a neoliberal um, package designed to manage the economic crisis that the globe is in, in the interests of the transnational capitalist class. And that, that kind of explains why they are associated with austerity, with a lot of harmful health outcomes, and many, many more billionaires. Um, however, I won't go into that, that overview of the problems we're facing, um, except to say that we spent quite a lot of time talking about the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which many of the countries represented in this room are involved in and which is just about to be um, signed. And um, we initiated a, uh, a sign-on letter which is now available for everyone in this room to sign on, uh, asking our governments to stop negotiating the RCEP project, to uh, withdraw from it, and to stop it coming into, in, into uh, effect because of its damaging effects on health. Um, two of those damaging effects are investor state dispute settlement and extreme intellectual property protection, but the package as a whole is much worse uh, than just those two. We also talked about a current initiative taking place in the African continent, which is the development of the African Med Medicines Agency, which has, um, has, which will be a continent-wide overseer of uh, medicines regulation. We think that there is some potential good to come out of such an organisation, except that it is being done in association with Big Pharma, and we know that Pharma is has been working in Africa for quite some time to use medicines regulation to police uh, intellectual property, to police intellectual property claims, uh, which if that were the case, if it was allowed to do that, it would contribute to very serious problems of prices of medicines in that continent. So we're looking at the possibility of, of an initiative around the African Medicines Agency as well. Um, okay. Then there's a little section on the causation of these problems, which, as I've said, is, is about the 
crisis of, of the global economy and the need to manage it in the interest of the billionaires. Um, the broad objectives of PHM must include stopping the negotiation of trade and investment agreements, which are designed to extend and strengthen this neoliberal regime, and for us to terminate or withdraw from existing agreements. We need to work towards a new international economic order, similar to the one that David outlined from 1974. Uh, a new international economic order which incorporates positive discrimination in favour of developing nations, which is oriented around an ecologically sustainable civilization based on living well rather than corporate profit. And we need to work to reform medicines regulation to ensure that it's based on national sovereignty and directed to ensuring quality, safety, affordability, efficacious, rational use. Then there's a series of action commitments. Um, I've talked about the sign-on that we've developed for the RCEP uh, 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 sign-on. And in this document, which I guess will be posted somewhere on PHM's website, there's a Google Doc address for signing on at this address. And we, we request that you have a look at the uh, the document that we've produced and um, uh, sign on. Okay, that's the first initiative. The second initiative is to refuse and roll back neoliberal trade and investment agreements. We've got a number of initiatives which we think are, which would contribute to that, uh, but I, I'm, my chairperson is a tough one and I'm not allowed to go into that. Okay. We want to support the UN Treaty on, uh, on uh, uh, a legally binding instrument on net transnational corporations and other business enterprises with respect to human rights. This is a major treaty initiative which BHM shall support. And we, we have made a commitment to campaigning around this. Um, we, we want to support a WHO treaty on the financing and coordination of research and development for medicines, diagnostics and devices. This is basically about delinking research and development into medicines and devices and diagnostics, delinking R&D away from profit based on IP. Public funding of research and development which it can be prioritised and done without funding massive marketing expenditure, which is the, the present model. And there's uh, several commitments under that region. We commit to health impact assessment and human rights assessment in trade agreements, and there's a, a little bit further about that. We commit to capacity building around trade and health, um, organising a program of webinars and information sheets, organising further IPHUs around access to medicines, developing a web portal to provide access to various reports, collecting and developing uh, stories about, uh, 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 of trade and health activism. And there have been some successes. We commit to networking. There's many progressive Asia networks um, already involved in trade and health food networks, women's networks, environment networks, many of which we can work to support, to build collaboration with, and uh, we commit to building those, those links. Um, last we commit to organising ourselves. Um, we have a, 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 WA, a, a PHM trade and health mailing list, um, which already has 120 people on it. Um, and if you would like that, which, which includes activists who are committed to working towards these ends, and if you'd like to join that mailing list, you should write to trade and health at phmovement.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. That was great. Um, we will now hear from the health systems uh, group, Sulakshana. You have to 
acknowledge that these have been put up like overnight, literally, because the groups have been working across the day. So yeah, I think we need it was really uh, quite amazing that all of the groups managed to work so hard and so quickly. Um, yeah, so we were part of the health systems um, thematic group and uh, there are around uh, 70 of us uh, who have uh, noted our names and our interest in this group. And uh, the key uh, problems to be addressed by PHM we believe is one is health insurance. Uh, publicly funded health insurance and looking at that, the privatization uh, push in various countries and the uh, uh, successful opposition of struggles against it. Health workers issues, uh, that is what I was trying to write, issue, the word issues, but it just did not happen. Uh, then uh, then uh, innovative approaches for uh, primary health care, community based primary health care. Um, and, uh, and, and looking at again uh, new strategies for developed uh, for um, uh, uh, placing uh, our work within the uh, health rights framework and, 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 and looking at the corporatization of uh, health, so corporate watch. Uh, the broad objectives of PHM's intervention, uh, we felt there was, uh, because from Cape Town, uh, during Cape Town, we did take out a declaration, I mean, uh, a, a caution on UHC, which we said that we think that, you know, UHC would. Uh, eventually developed into a very narrow and uh, also insurance and private sector dominated um, uh, uh, strategy and now uh, uh, um, in the, uh, you know, the years that have gone by, I mean, basically uh, it's been proven, I mean, uh, I mean we, we, and uh, uh, that, that, that's what exactly has happened and, uh, and we felt the need to build the evidence on that I and mean, there is evidence collated and where there is um, um, uh, and collate case studies, country case studies, so that could be uh, one of the uh, main objectives. Uh, and also uh, look at the uh, successful uh, interventions in uh, resisting privatization. Uh, the second thing, uh, we felt we already uh, have a, uh, a, a common um, uh, um, a, a common build up to the World Health Day on 7th April and this year to universal health coverage, uh, everyone everywhere. So we feel that that's a very a great time to uh, actually uh, where we, uh, uh, you know, we build up to it and then uh, in all countries and in all uh, regions we can have uh, collective um, um, uh, action. Um, on the material also, and using also the material that is produced. Uh, then uh, there were two more ideas for days which we thought one was a primary health care day uh, uh, to highlight uh, health as a right and, uh, and the health workers day uh, which we felt was very important uh, to highlight the conditions uh, of work, lack of benefit, uh, things which uh, prevent a health worker from work, uh, you know, for uh, providing service to the people. And uh, the third objective is to create international national action to improve health systems uh, for health for all. So I, uh, we, we did discuss a lot of uh, action and I will straight away go on to the people uh, who are going to be responsible for all this. And, uh, and we would have liked to have uh, representation from all the regions. So uh, you can just look at the list and in case you want to contribute, so you are welcome to contact any of us who are on the list. So, so case studies on a uh, country experiences in privatized, so the negative uh, impacts of health, the public funded health insurance privatization and successful or positive stories of struggles uh, again, uh, uh, against this. Uh, uh, so, so the core group, uh, I'll just uh, read out health insurance in which uh, Patricia, Maziko, Sulakshna uh, and comrade uh, 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 from South Africa will come, uh, Sharad. Privatization. I mean, I think you, you can see the names. Uh, so we have one on health insurance, one on privatization, one on health workers, one on innovative attempts in PHC, one on the health rights framework under the UN Committee on uh, Economic, Cultural, Social uh, Rights, and the corporate watch. Uh, here, uh, the two things that I want to tell you is that um, uh, one is that uh, people in the group, uh, leading the groups, are going to be. Uh, developing templates, especially for the one on privatization and the struggles and for the health insurance. 
uh, and will be circulating them uh, definitely to the 70 people who are part of the group. We have uh, taken off the email IDs, but also on the PHM exchange. And this is a request for you to kindly uh, then uh, respond and uh, and and uh, uh, send in the material. Uh, and uh, secondly, if anybody wants to join, uh, then very much welcome. You can contact any of the people uh, where you want, depending on which group you want to join. Thank you. So um, now we have the group of food and nutrition. Claudio, uh, we will not be able to project that. Yeah. Obediently following the instructions received, I will only present eight commitments to action, not to bore you. Twenty plus people, participants, agreed in our group. And I'm very proud to say to become a core group to more actively introduce nutrition issues as a PHM priority and beyond. <coughs> Second, we will engage in training our PHM cadres on the political economy of malnutrition, and for this we will work towards thematic, a thematic food and nutrition IPHU in 2019. Third, we will actively seek stronger links with other organizations and movements working on food and nutrition, such as people working on breastfeeding, Ipfan who works in infant feeding, Fian who works on many other aspects of nutrition, and the World Public Health Nutrition Association, which has all the public health nutritionists under an umbrella. Fourth, we will actively seek stronger links with other organizations. Fourth, content-wise, our group, our core group, will concentrate on the triple burden of malnutrition, that is, undernutrition, overnutrition, and the deficiencies of vitamins and minerals. And as these are related all to the non communicable diseases epidemic. Here we will use our expertise and our strategic advantage to provide support and work together with our sister organizations. We can help them in terms of the expertise we have within on the more nitty gritty aspects of the problem. Fifth, in this endeavor, we will oppose the current overwhelmingly technical false solutions that ignore, as they told us, the social determination of malnutrition. There's a lot to do there. Contents and organizations and programs and initiatives that are using the wrong approach. Six, we will share PHM, PHM's analysis of the food and nutrition situation and our recommendations to influence actions in this area. This, we will include increasing our capacity in PHM, our capabilities in using mass and social media to spread the food and nutrition topics. Seven. One of our members of the group volunteered. We will be gathering positive case studies to make them widely available as examples of the possible approaches that can be used to improve food and nutrition situation. For instance, the experiences, the rich experiences coming from the Buen Vivir movement probably should be highlighted in this effort. And finally, number eight, we will support the WHO watch on taking PHM positions on food and nutrition whenever these come up in the World Health Assembly. And last but not least, we will try to have specific food and nutrition chapters on upcoming global health watches. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudio, and thanks to the whole group.
from the group who worked on gender in Deepaka.
another uh, area that we felt that was important was on awareness raising. In fact, this was to be done at uh, two levels, both within the PHM and outside of the PHM. Within the PHM, we felt that it should be done at, at all levels, that is at the local, regional, as well as the global levels. And towards this, we planned that we would map, share existing resources, and develop position papers that will allow uh, discussion and furthering of the discourse of gender and health within the PHM and outside of it. And uh, I mean, we, we haven't put down the names of people who take responsibility for it, but over the next few months, we hope to keep bringing our position papers on various issues uh, within uh, the PHM. Uh, capacity building, we felt that the IPHU gender stream that took place this time we received 170 applications and we could only uh, finally uh, a, you know, allow participation of about 35 people. And we really, all of us in the circle felt that it's a very important uh, initiative of the PHM that must be continued. And we must explore possibilities. I mean, we also talked about exploring, I mean, possibility of exploring online kind of exchange of information and the possibility of online learning too. But that's in the longer term. But in the shorter and immediate term, really looking at the gender stream to be continued. Um, finally, um, I, I just to kind of uh, to talk about uh, research and mapping of evidence from across the world. I think that uh, Claudia also spoke about that. Testimonies, case studies from different regions so that we learn from each other and really uh, uh, kind of um, build solidarity. Uh, and the last thing is in the other initiatives of the PHM, whether it's the Global Health Watch uh, or the WHO Watch, as a circle that we will try and inform and kind of bring in inputs as a gender circle to kind of uh, um, influence issues or kind of uh, to bring in better understanding of the issues that are being discussed in the assemblies. So these were some of the points that we had discussed and uh, we'll be putting up a more detailed note, we'll share it and it'll be up on the website we go. And for anyone else who are not able to make it to these two days discussions and would like to be part of the gender circle, please do contact uh, Sarojini or me. Uh, you can also contact us at the end of the meeting and give us your email IDs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. So, the group of environment, Erika.
so that building health and welfare systems through research of the risk from environmental destruction. That means we should start questioning that resources that are coming from, from oil industry or from mining industry, even if those resources build hospitals that will later have, gain access to people to, uh, to help, uh, to help attention, because then oil drilling and mining would cause most ca more cancer and more need for health services. Um, another key problem, environmental exploitation of this profession, fossil fuel dependency, extracting industries, mining, gas, oil, forestry, agribusiness, hydroelectrical projects, aquaculture, transnational corporations, international transport of goods, and overconsumption by rich parts of the population. The, the one thing that we put also is the conditions making workers dependent from exploitative jobs that destroy health and the environment, military and weapons industry bigger, big, being uh, the bigger destroyer of environment and health, and the violence used to enforce environmental exploitation for profit. So violence is a, a main component also of, the, of how the environment is exploited. And the impact of change on migration, food, water security, vector diseases, extreme climatic events, conflict air pollution, increasing allergens, societal breakdown, or disintegration. So that are this kind of huge wide range of problems. And um, the causes are capitalism, our production, consumption, exploitation of ecosystems. But also, we are questioning, as I said, uh, the Western model of development that makes uh, the center of anthropocentrism and the human as the center. Uh, causes are privatization and corporatization of public goods and services, transport, health, education, and the destruction of biodiversity, ways of living, and cultural diversity. So the objectives are, of our group are promote ecosystem health, which means the health of us and of Mother Nature, and support organizations that oppose the global extractivist project. Our, our need is not to build another <coughs> environmental group, but to, to strengthen the links of environmental health within DHM and also with other organizations that are already working in environment. Support Create health systems that support healthy ecosystems, supporting models of work that promote safe, healthy occupations and production, and thus seeing the relationship of occupational health with environment and with, and with health promotion. And action commitments. So we have some of these already came from the declaration that will be posted of the Strategic Industry Team. Uh, schematic group, but also networking, which is use health as a bridge to strengthen links between land rights movement, environmental rights movement, biodiversity, and human rights movement. A strengthen links between occupational health and environmental health, as I said before. A strengthen north and south, north south cooperation among people affected by extractive industries, such as share development strategies, tactics as well as solidarity and resistance in our common struggles across the world. And we have been doing, already been doing that in the uh, North America, Latin America regions, like um, North uh, Canadian industries have been, uh, back, has been helping us to talk, to challenge Canadian industries that are having business, for instance, in Ecuador or in other regions. And, um, Organized regional gatherings where athletes can share experiences in the defense of people's health, land, and water against attractive industries. Link with existing campaigns such as One Million Jobs campaign, alternative work for minors, or extension related, re, extension related movement in the UK. In awareness raising, hot health system wastes and emissions. So we also uh, discuss about the NHS, for instance, being a huge producer of carbon emissions how health systems also um, could produce climate change, uh, promoting humanitarian alternatives and indigenous ancestral knowledge uh, and technologies, and condemning the criminalization, repression, and extrajudicial killing of activists in the struggle. As direct actions, we already, in the PHM, a lot of country circles, do protests and direct actions regarding anti-extractive um, 
uh, anti-destructive campaigns. So disseminate these campaigns and experiences uh, of action in different countries and through the PHM communication channels. In capacity building, organize events to facilitate the sharing of experiences. And we were asking this to the movement. We need support with translation to exchange experiences across regions because it's hard to talk in Spanish and have uh, solidarity with um, English-speaking comrades. Uh, and in policy analysis and advocacy, some ideas that uh, already are being implemented by PHM North America's critical analysis of countries' environmental policies to include a health perspective. So that is pretty much what we discussed. Thank you very much, Erika. So the last group is uh, the group that worked uh, over lunch because we didn't have actually a thematic uh, space for that on wars, occupation, migration, and human rights in Jojo is going to report. Can I request uh, our comrades and colleagues who participated in this uh, thematic uh, workshop? Please stand up and be recognized. Everybody in Team 6, Thank you, this is our collective effort and we'd like to thank those who knock on the doors of the organizers to resume this workshop. Missing this team, this great team of migration, military conflict, occupation and state repression will be of great impact. These are such worsening realities that we have to face as one of the worst social determinant of health nowadays. Migration related health issues or migration as we see in the TV, the Rohingya and millions of other uh, refugees going out of their countries, um, occupations, militarization, they all spell death and illnesses. Um, we root this out as a causation of these problems in the insatiable greed, uh, insatiable capital, capitalist greed that uh, exploit our resources and our people and brought about uh, insurmountable effects. For the broad objectives of this intervention in this area, the PHM wants one to show solidarity with the people who are suffering in these circumstances. The Rohingya refugees, the refugees going in Europe, the internally displaced in their own countries because of militarization, protecting foreign companies in the mining of mining corporations and foreign funded dams. Second, we want as a whole to show our help to comrades in the struggle who are facing repression. We, health workers and the communities we are working are definitely under attack. Third, we need to pressure international organizations to advocate for, for equitable policies, conflict resolution, peace building, and disarmament. We also want to influence government policies in favor of safe and free movement of people and ensure that migrants and refugees' health rights are upheld. We also want to stop military research and development with taxpayers' money. They are our money killing us directly. We also want to push for more social agenda in those regional integration processes. We want the UN system to take up their role and increase their accountability, including the UNRWA. And last but not the least, we want to expose what is really happening in the context of a massive 
fake news and misinformation by the powers, by the imperial powers and their local collaborators. For our action commitments, we recommend the following. One, in the aspect of networking and collaborating together, building solidarity and listening across differences. We need to build stronger linkages with both peace movements, with organizations working for denuclearization and disarmament and others. We need to build more and stronger linkages with movements of migrants and with their solidarity movements. And we need to strengthen our communication exchange of information. On the aspect of awareness raising, publications, campaigns, etc., we want to ensure better visibility of our issues. We need to communicate them to the world. We need to communicate them to ourselves so that we can gather solidarity. Second, we need to campaign for the rights to help of migrants and refugees. We also need to campaign for the divestment to stop funding with public money from military research and development and the military industry in general. We also need to campaign for the safe passage of refugees. Some rec recommendations on direct actions we enjoin everybody to join the BDS campaign to assert the right to return and to end the occupation in Palestine. <laughs> we need to have a coordinated day of action around these issues, probably on the, human, on the, on the day of the international human rights. Our research, including collecting learning from people's experiences and testimonies, we might enjoy each other to form quick reaction teams, fact-finding missions, and solidarity missions. We need efforts on policy analysis and advocacy. And for some action, a concrete one, Coming March, there will be a meeting of Europe, MENA, uh, regarding migration issues. We are under attack, but we dare say, Makibaka wat matakot! Makibaka wat matakot! We dare to struggle, we dare to win. so much effort in, in coming up with concrete proposals and, and strong commitments. Um, I need to acknowledge another group that has been gathering and, and doing great work and I'm going to read just a few lines from them. The traditional leaders of the world, along with primary care workers and public health researchers coming from Argentina, Australia, Bangladesh, Brazil, Gambia, Guatemala, India, Liberia, Mexico, Nepal, Nigeria, Paraguay, Sri Lanka, South Africa, United Kingdom, and others arrived at a, at a declaration. The declaration emerged from the deliberations in the subplenary on indigenous health and well-being and three workshops on ancestral, ancestral knowledge and practices, traditional medicine, and politics of knowledge that were conducted during the assembly. So the declaration will be made available equally on the website Unfortunately, we don't have time to read it. And uh, on the same basis, if there are other groups that produce statements and materials that we don't know of, please send them to us, get in touch with me, and we will make sure that everything is put up on the website as attachment to the declaration. What is the process now for these um, documents? So these documents and actually these groups will not end, as you can see, at the assembly. So they will continue working. There will be hubs of activities for PHN. So you will, you will find these documents up on the website. In addition, we will try 
not an easy task, but a group will be mandated to put up, to come up with the declarations, to consolidate these documents, especially the parts regarding analysis and then, uh, objectives and actions, in just one document. Uh, and again, this will go on the website. It will stay there in different languages for collecting further inputs and comments. And then this will represent the final declaration of uh, this fourth people self-assembly. So I hope the process is clear for everybody. If you have any doubt, just come see us. But just to say that it is not the final words of this document. They are meant to guide our action, but they also can be improved through the contribution of, of everybody. Um, I think now it's a time for celebration. Thank, thank you. Thanks. I, I, need only the, I seek only one minute to address my one. I am afraid I we cannot minute. open uh, one minute, but I'm, I'm sure so many people would have things to say at this point. I am sorry. I am really sorry. Yeah, yeah, so David, can you please come back up on stage and Delen?